Howdy. In this video, we are going to talk about the descriptive analytics. Um, we have seen this in the class, but I'll just uh, use it as a reminder. So there is a measure of center in the data and then the measure of dispersion. A uh, measure of center basically tells us where the data is. Uh, if somebody tells us like what would be your estimation or expectation, we usually talk about the mean, median and mod, right? And we have seen those in the class. Then the measure of dispersion tells us how this data is distributed. We have the range information, uh, which requires a mean and maximum of the data. Then we can cal calculate the percentiles or quartiles. And uh, using that, we can calculate inter uh, interquartile range then of course we can calculate variance and standard deviation right then we also have the skewness of data as shown here this is a negatively skewed data and this is the positively skewed data right uh, and uh, based on that skewness we know what how is the mod median and mean are uh, sorted and finally we have the data courtesies right if we have a positive courtesies. What it means is basically if I compare that to the normal distribution, this distribution has a wider tail, right? This is a wider tail. And if it's a smaller or negative uh, courtesies, then um, uh, compared to the standard normal distribution, this has a shorter tail as we see here, right? So that's basically what courtesies tell me. Smaller numbers means the tail is small or short and then if it is large then uh, the tails are uh, larger as well right with that i'm going to switch to python uh, and before that we will just go over the data we have seen before right uh, i'm going to open this file called uh, salespeople and i believe i used this data file before so what i have i'm going to check it that exploratory study basically I have the transaction ID, salesperson, uh, names, their region, and then the account number, the customer account number, the sales the, uh, amount in dollars, and the time these things happened, right? Uh, so I have certain number of salespeople, I don't know how many, uh, but we'll uh, figure that one out later. Uh, all data seems to be reasonable to me. It seems the numbers are uh, like really numbers and the names are names and then the sales dollars are uh, actually the uh, numbers so there is not really a data cleaning part in this one and uh, this is an excel file and i believe it's an xls x file All right with that i'm going to switch to python All right so i'm in python now i have already coded few lines to get it started uh, i'm importing the pandas spd and then reading the salespeople data as SP, right? Uh, as you guys remember, there was a transaction ID. I'm setting the transaction ID as the index, and then I'm gonna print, all right? Hopefully this line will work, all right? Uh, here's my data, all right? Uh, so there is transaction ID and uh, everything is there, right? Now, uh, let's start. Um, calculating the measure of center first and then we'll go do the others right and clearly there is only sales amount here that i can do all those uh, you know mean median uh, calculation for the months region and salesperson as well as the transaction id and account number and those statistics doesn't mean much right so uh, what i need to tell uh, python is that i'm gonna work with this uh, data from SP and I'm going to specifically work with the column sales amount right and uh, let's start calculating the mean so I'm gonna just say get me the mean so the mean the average sales dollar is uh, 1085 and a couple of uh, cents more right we could also get the median the same idea I'm gonna copy paste and this is the beauty of working with this software because I don't need to do anything in terms of real calculation. I just call the function, right? So here's the median function. Uh, the median is uh, 1010. Uh, and finally, I'm going to call the mod. Uh, and I just say mod, right? 
So it seems there are two modes actually, 1564 and 1603 uh, uh, repeats the most, right? So now I have those information and I can comment on uh, these numbers, right? Uh, and in this video, I'm gonna just go through certain like this quickly to introduce you all these um, function. I'm gonna uh, talk also about the actually let me copy this so it will be right. Uh, the second part was the uh, dispersion, and then we we started with the range, but uh, for range I need the mean and max, right? Here's my minimum. And here's my maximum, right? Uh, and this is all basically uh, very easy to remember, right? Uh, I could also calculate uh, well, like variance, all right? Let's do the variance. All right. Now, if you guys remember in the class, we discussed this variance and standard deviation calculation specifically. Uh, for the uh, sample and then also for the population. Now in Python, uh, the default is the sample, right? So you don't need to worry much, but uh, if you happen to find yourself in an environment when you have the actual population data, then you basically define the degrees of freedom as uh, zero, right? So uh, for every function in uh, Jupyter Network, if you press the shift tab, it shows you what are the options available, right? Right now, if I press this plus, I can define axis, skip, uh, not available data, so if it's empty, and degrees of freedom is one, as I mentioned, right? Uh, and I can change that one to basically uh, calculate the population, right? And how do I do that? I just say, D O F is equal to zero. Right. As you see, because now I'm dividing by n versus n minus one here, uh, the standard deviation uh, reduce is reduced slightly. Right, uh, that that is the uh, information I had. Uh, I could also calculate interquartile range. Right. And um, for that, I need, oops, I need the quantiles, right? Instead of saying quantile one or three, we actually write where it is located. Quantile one corresponds to uh, first 25%, right? And then uh, quantile three corresponds to um, 75% of the data uh, 0.75 right so from here I could calculate the uh, interquartile range which is basically the difference between 1564 and 673.75 I'm gonna do those calculation later I'm just right now going over um, the functions uh, I could calculate the skewness. Again, it is very easy. I just say skew, and that tells me the, so it's a negatively skewed data. And finally, I could say curtises. Right. right. This means it's a short tail, basically, compared to the normal distribution. Now, that was a lot of comments to remember, and uh, sometimes you really need to just call one of them rather than everything. But uh, Python, the data frame, or uh, you know, pandas, has actually another uh, command called describe, uh, and describe basically can calculate all these at once, right? So that is the last one. I'm gonna show you. Right, here it is. We say just describe. So there are 42 data points, rows of data, 42 rows of data. The mean is <coughs> the mean is uh, 1085, standard deviation is 484, mean max is there, as well as the quantiles uh, and then the median. Right. So I could just uh, look into this and gives uh, this gives me pretty good idea. 
about the data itself. All right now, uh, that's how we call the descriptive statistics from uh, Python pandas. Now, in the second part of this video, I'm going to talk about the outlier detection. Right in the class, we discuss uh, different types of uh, outlier detection, but at the end. I told you uh, we are going to focus right now at least the z-score and then the IQR. Z-score is basically we calculate the mean and the standard deviation of the data, right? Then transform the data to normal distribution, right? Uh, by doing the data point minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And if that value is uh, beyond plus minus three, uh, then we'd call this as an uh, outlier, right? So uh, let's do that calculation. Uh, what I would like to do is actually uh, to this data I have here, add two more columns of data, right? And then I'm going to uh, flag the row, whether if it is an uh, outlier, right? Let's do that. So I'm going to add new columns and I will name them. This is uh, square brackets, z-score and IQR. Right. Uh, and now I can basically say the new SP, the salespeople data is going to be and the SP, I was using it, and I'm going to reindex it. Um, reindex means basically it's going to sort it again, uh, in this case, alphabetical. Uh, and um, I will add new columns uh, by introducing the union of uh, the, the new columns that I just defined up there. All right, and I'm gonna do this on axis one, which is basically column. Right. All right, let's see. And so now I ran it. Let me uh, look at the head of the data. Oops. SP dot head. Right, it is here. Let's say the transaction ID is there. Account. Then IQR, as I said, it is alphabetical ordered because of the, that reindexing. And it is just an empty uh, data right now. I have the month, region, sales amount, salesperson, and Z scores, right? Uh, so uh, from here, uh, I'm gonna do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to define a function, right? And I call this function as z-score, right? And for this function, I need to send three information. What is the mean? What is the standard deviation? And what is the value I am considering, right? For example, what I mean with that is um, when we calculated the mean and standard deviation, they were 1,085 and 484, uh, right? So I'm going to send that information plus uh, for the first row, I'm going to sell, uh, send 259 as an input to this function, right? And idea is that it will calculate the z-score and then compare with the uh, plus minus 3. And uh, based on that, I will flag it if it is um, an outlier. All right. So uh, let's start. So I'm going to say the z-score value is equal to the value right minus the mean and divide that with the standard deviation right if this z score that i just calculated uh, and, but let me put it in absolute value because that is easy absolute value of this z score i just calculated is greater than three basically if it is plus three, a positive three and higher or negative three or lower, right? In those cases, Z score absolute is gonna be uh, bigger than three, right? If this is the case, I will say return 
one and whenever i see one in the data i would know that is an outlier right that's how i'm going to interpret uh, if that's not true else uh, i'm going to return zero right and zero means this is uh, not an outlier right so i just run that function shift enter now i'm gonna uh, write the code to basically run uh, all these data points through this function and then tell me whether there is an outlier or not all right so first i need to get the mean and the mean we just did it a little bit earlier that was sales amount mean all right and then i'm gonna get the standard deviation and similarly that was std right and now basically i'm going to say the sp the z score it's capital z and uh, these are all case sensitive right so this is z score i'm gonna just copy paste actually Right. z score that's going to be equal to sp and i'm going to apply this function that i called a lambda rov All right so for every row i'm going to add this one and i'm going to call this z score function oops And in that z-score, I would like to send that function the mean, standard deviation, and then the row of sales amount, right? right. And I'm going to do this one on all axes. So basically all column uh, for the entire column i'm gonna do all these calculations right so let's see hopefully this is gonna work uh, it looks like it worked and let me check all right so i see uh, z score at least the ones i'm seeing are all zeros and there were 42 of them and um, I can just check all of them visually here, right? It seems all of them zero. So there is no outlier. That is what it is telling me. And I could just run this function uh, again. For example, uh, let's change one of the data points uh, for first one uh, and then see if that will uh, basically uh, result in an outlier and actually i will make it as an outlier uh, by making a large number so let me run this one again at the five so what i'm gonna say is that uh, oh, there are two ways to access or change a cell value in a data frame one of them is through indexes and then the other one is basically telling which row and column uh, you are looking at if i'm look thinking about the indexes the first column is index zero then one three four five six seven and it goes and then similarly first row is the row zero and then one two three four and it continues right so if i want to change sp oops all right and let's say i want to change the uh, the first row sales amount value right that is one two zero one two three four right that is the four index and i'm gonna say indexed at right uh, the first row is actually the index zero and then the four and that is equal to let's say ten thousand right uh, i could just do the sp head again to see if it has and uh, really changed right right here it is 10,000 now it was 259 um, let's do one more uh, and this time I'm gonna use the like name of the location right and for that let's say SP 
at now I'm gonna tell which transaction ID and which column I am looking at right and I'm not gonna do change a lot of things but let's change the uh, the second row here uh, with the transaction ID of 1191 and sales amount so I'm gonna tell uh, Python that I want to change 1191 right and then the sales amount column so it will find the row with the transaction ID 1191 and then the column name sales amount right and let's make that one 15,000 right and this is something for now I'm just making it up but in the future we may need to manipulate the data right for example uh, there might be some missing values that I wanted to replace with another value and so forth this is how I could and do all those right and then again sp head all right so uh, my first row is 10,000 the second one is 15 let me run this code again and I'm gonna just copy paste right uh, the function is still the same z score function right and then I would um, basically go and run this and then print it again print head right so now basically it flagged these two columns as uh, outliers right and uh, there is no other uh, outliers if i want to know like how many outliers are there actually i could always do this like count or sum it right for example, I could just say sum. Uh oh, uh, z score. Because that that is the place I have my outlier number. So when I sum this this column, z score column, it says two. At this point, I know there are two outliers basically, even if I cannot see, uh, let's say one or two of them at the same time. Right. So that is. An outlier I'm gonna go back and change these numbers uh, to their originals 259 and 14 um, this was 259 and the other one was 1422 All right, let's do it again All right there come back of course uh, I changed the sales amount, but I didn't update the z-score. Uh, I can go back update them as well by running that code again. So now uh, basically shift enter, shift enter. Now I have everything uh, as the original, right? If you don't want to do this, you may create a copy of the data uh, frame uh, and then uh, work with that copy. And when you are done, you can just uh, delete the copy, right? So we are done with the um, z-score transformation and we identified or we were not able to identify any outliers in this data set. The second one is the IQR, interquartile range. And if you guys remember from the class discussion, uh, for IQR, I need to uh, find the quartile one and three uh, and then uh, look at the difference between them and go from there. Right. So I'm going to say, oops, Q1 is, right, uh, perhaps this is not the best place, uh, quantile 0 0.25, right that is because it put the pound sign first it converted as a number right and then uh, actually let me just type underneath q3 is the same thing almost right but it is 75 right and i can print this um, by saying print q1 and q3 right 673 75 and 1564 i had seen these numbers before i can go back and uh, check it 1564 673 
uh, so uh, they are still correct they are uh, the same quartiles so then I can say my IQR is equal to at Q3 minus Q1 and if I want to print I can print this value but I'm just gonna continue I'm gonna say lower bound is equal to uh, Q1 minus 1.5 times um, IQR I'm doing uh, minor outlier detection and uh, that should be enough um, if I have too many minor outliers then I could also run uh, major outlier detection but the point is that I need to just change this line instead of saying 1.5 I need to say 3 right uh, upper bound is uh, q3 plus 1.5 times iqr right and similarly I can print the upper and lower bound uh, lower bound upper bound right so my lower bound is 661 minus 661 and upper bound is 2899 again if I go back to earlier descriptive statistic I know the max wasn't um, that high the max was 1825 so I know there is no uh, basically outliers in the data uh, but uh, uh, let's say I don't have uh, that information at this point or there might be some outliers but I don't know which one of them I could uh, do something similar to the z-score transformation just define a function and then assign um, basically all that value to that column we created IQR column here and let's do that and that would be basically end of this video all right, so I'm going to define a function and I would say IQR minor outlier. Okay, uh, actually, let me say uh, it is outlier because minor or major just depends on the lower and upper bound. So this function is not really impacted by that. All right, uh, and I need the lower bound, I need the upper bound, and then uh, the value right by just comparing those I'm going to uh, be able to tell whether this is an outlier or not right so if uh, the value is less than the lower bound right so in that case it is an outlier or if the value is greater than upper bound I'm going to say return one again and what one was my definition for one was this is an outlier right else uh, return zero this is not an outlier right then I'm gonna run that line uh, just saying that uh, or just pressing shift enter uh, finally I'm going to write something similar to this line here Right. Uh, basically, I'm going to say uh, in this data frame that I have SP, uh, calculate or create this um, IQR column using this function over there. Right. I'm going to copy paste and then modify, which is going to be faster than just uh, writing IQR. Uh, still SP apply rov, but this time it is I IQR outlier. Right. The function is not rov. Uh, Z score IQR outlier. I need a lower bound. This needs to be in the order I defined before because otherwise it's gonna just not work, right? And then the row is sales amount similar. Uh, and then I, I just do the access transformation again. I can look at the head. Here it is, all of them are uh, zero. We knew there was no uh, outliers. If I wanted to uh, do this again and change the number, see how that works, we could do it. Let's say this is 14,200 
220 and then run it and then again just oops, run this line I know actually Q1 and Q3 did not change but um, it's just what is it changed oh it might change uh, slightly uh, if it shifted from one number to the other one all right uh, and then um, I'm going to calculate the interquartile range uh, I don't need to rerun the function again and this one it is here right. now it is marked like this is the outlier right and uh, that would be it again if I want I cannot see on the screen I can look at the sum of that column to see if there are any outliers or um, print them I could also do some filtering which we will learn later right so that's it for now and I'm gonna also uh, show you probably